ID. And that is, it does exist. It should not be controversial. It is a child's response to enormous trauma. How do you deal with that trauma? One alternative, it turns out, is to fracture, to have parts of you that remember and parts of you that say that's an unbearable memory. I'm going to go ahead and be a creative actor in the outside. It's a very hard thing to talk about because as soon as you broach it, if you don't tell the whole story, you sound like a raving lunatic. Robert Oxnam is a distinguished international scholar, a specialist on China, steeped in both its ancient and contemporary history, its culture and its language. One very serious fellow. But Oxnam is also Bobby a devil-may-care rollerblader in New York Central Park. Bobby is one of three personalities who are no longer walled off, but still coexist with Robert. I'm dominant in that I'm the front guy. You speak for all of you. I, I speak for all of you, and when I don't, there's, there's, there's hell to pay. <laughs> Oxnum grew up under great pressure to succeed. His father a university president. His grandfather a Methodist bishop and president of the World Council of Churches. What do you think the Chinese motivation was? Well, I think that over the past... Robert did not disappoint. Kind of Policymakers and journalists side. like Walter Cronkite sought out his views. While still in his 30s, he was named president of the Asia Society, a renowned cultural and research institution. He was tour guide in China to the rich and influential, like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. The public, Robert Oxnum, was on top of the world, but inside... There was a combination of deep depression, of anger, occasional rage, um, and a sense, therefore, that there was glittering success out here and ongoing decay, and it got worse. In the 1980s, he was dogged by alcoholism and bulimia. His first marriage fell apart. He saw a psychiatrist, but his problems, including blackouts, continued. But there were times when you woke up with burns and scratches on your body that you had no idea what caused them. I not only have no idea, I have no memory of the context in which it occurred. There was another life going on. There was another life going on. He would find himself hanging around Grand Central Station in New York, lost in the crowd in a kind of trance. He would hear voices. The voices were sometimes spoken. And it was startling to hear, you're bad, you're terrible, you're the worst person who ever lived. And then in 1990, at a routine session with his psychiatrist, Dr. Jeffrey Smith, Oxnum suddenly became someone else. There was a complete change. His, his eyes kind of fluttered like that. And there was a change in his voice and his, his demeanor and his movements. And uh, he was really a different person.